So hello and welcome to another edition of DAX Fridays, finally. And it is also a power week because the Power BI team released the November 2018 Power Desktop update and that includes DAX functions, new DAX functions. And we're going to go through the easing scope function. So uh, sorry for my cold. I hope you hear me well. Nothing I can do about it. So let's go. Let's do it. Okay, so here we are on Power BI. This is the, we're not on Power BI. We are actually, oh my God, sorry, it's my cold. So we're actually on the documentation of the DAX reference uh, function. And uh, it says here that the is in scope function, it returns true when the specified column is in the level in a hierarchy of levels. I'll, I'll explain that, don't worry. So here they give like a huge uh, DAX measure. And then here there is a small data set. I have actually copied this data set into Power BI. So we're going to go through it. I thought it was the easiest way to, to, to do this. So I'm going to base this video in a Casper uh, blog post. I will link it down below. Uh, I've just simplified his example. So it's just, just easier to understand. And uh, there is also a new blog post from Daniel that also explains the, the function. So you have three examples now for that function. I think you should be able to get going with that. Let's go into Power BI. Um, we go here and I'm going to show you the data set. So again, we have two tables. We have one for sales and a product ID. And then we have one with categories. Here is accessories and bikes. And then there is subcategories. And then what is different here is that the ground totals and the subtotals are also included on the data set. Why you wouldn't take them away? Beats me. When I have these data sets, I remove them and then I calculate those in DAX. I don't know. There's probably a case, otherwise they wouldn't do this. So I'm going to show you how it works if you have this case. So you have categories of category product ID. You have a seller. The seller is basically where you have all the levels. So you have here the totals for the bikes, the totals for uh, the uh, for each category, and then you have a grand total. And here in each total is just an indicator that says this is level one, level two, level three. So level zero is you know each category by itself, and then you have like subcategory, and then you have the the grand total. So you have zero, one, and two. So what's the deal with it? If you put category and you put subcategory in there and uh, you put the sales and then you do a matrix of it and we're going to use a new released function uh, plus and minus icons. Yay, yay. So you see them there. This is from the, um, where, where on earth? It's in the values. There you go. So we see a little bit better. So um, we have now the different levels. Let's do this a little bit bigger too. So now we see something, right? And then if you expand these things, what you're going to see is that you get a lot of blanks. Okay, so the blanks that you get is for the grand totals and the sub totals. As we have category in here, you see the blanks in there and subcategory, those are the blanks that you see. And uh, if we look at the results of what it should be, I have created an Excel so we can see it side by side. You can see here the grand total is 28, which is correct, the accessories. So the subtotal for the accessories is actually you see it here, 78,000. Here is uh, adding up the subtotal with each the subcategory, which is wrong. And this is giving us the wrong values. And the same for the bikes. The bikes should be a total for bikes is 28 million, which is this one. And this, you know, it's adding up because Power BI or Power PO by default does not understand hierarchies. So we have to make this work. And this is where the in scope function helps. Let me show you this. We put it in there. First of all, normally you will do this using is filter. 
So we're going to have is filtered. Don't need to do it like that. Is filtered subcategory. So if we put here is filtered categories, subcategories, so you see why the part of a team took this. So this little formula will basically tell you if something is being filtered or not by saying true or false. So as you can see here, uh, bike racks is being filtered. True. This is true, true, true. And on the next level, you can see that no, this is not being filtered. Great. Uh, if we do now is in scope subcategory, And then we put the subcategory there. You are going to see the exact same thing and you wonder, okay, so what is it good for? Why do we need it if this filter is already working? Well, if you would add a, not that one, if you add a subcategory, like, oh, I hate when it happens. Can you please power baby, remove that automatic? It's just so annoying. So subcategory, if we use this as a filter and we filter by bike stands, look what happens. So the is filter is actually answering to the filters that are around it. And suddenly accessories is being filtered too. And this is because when you are filtering the bike stands, it's filtering the table behind, so everything is getting filtered. But as you can see, the is in scope is not affected. And this is why the is in scope is so useful. If we would do the same for categories, let me, let's do that. We do new measure is filtered categories is filtered category and I would love if we could copy measures please please power bi team I want to copy measures in scope category category if we put it in there uh, is filter category you see that it's giving us true on both levels, which is not what we wanted. What we really wanted it was to have false on the sub levels and true on the categories. So this is not really working, but Casper has a really cool um, trick for this. I'm going to show you. So is in scope category version two. This is what it does, super smart. You go to suite, shift, enter, and then you use true. You need to use true. If you don't know how switch true works, I have a Dax Friday's video on that. So go and check it out. I'm going to link it either up here or down there or both. So you need to use true and you need to put this in the right order or the one it won't work. And if you watch the video, you'll understand why. You don't want to make this video too long. So we will go here and you say switch uh, true. And then you're going to use, uh, let me just a second. You go in there and you do, ah, 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 Jesus. Oh, I have two more things. Uh, I'm going to show you is in scope. <coughs> so if category subcategory is in scope, then write subcategory, just so we see what's going on. And then we go shift enter is in scope. And then we have category in that order. Otherwise it won't work. Just turn it around and you'll see. Uh, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to make an error just because, and then we have here is going to write category. Now, do you see that there is a red marking in there? So if you do a mistake, the new DAX editor will actually tell you where the mistake happened. You can see there, it's like there's something wrong just there. And then you can also see where your cursor is. You see the black thing? Oh, and one more thing. Check this out. 
You can see me and then out on the dark side of the door. Yeah, yeah, that's super cool. I have to just remember to do it. So now we know that there is a, something wrong there. We go there, comma, shift, enter, and then here, other. So if nothing of those are true, let's go to others, which is like an if statement. Boom. Close my self, you put in there, and there you have it. So what we're basically saying is first go and check the sub-levels. If you find the sub-level, that is a subcategory. Then go to find the level above, and if that is true, then put a category. So now you can identify the different categories. And as you can see, the totals get an other magic. That's super cool. That's really cool. Um, okay, <coughs> excuse me. With that said, uh, now we're going to create a measure that will allow us to show the sum of these things correctly. Um, hold your horses, my friends, because that is going to be a long next measure. <laughs> I really hope that I managed to explain it well. I'll, give, I'll do my best. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. First of all, we're going to give it a name. This is like hierarchy sales. So it's a sales total for our hierarchy, okay? First, we're going to create a variable that will calculate the sum of the grand total. So we put here a variable, and then I call it grand total, which is equal to calculate sales where the category is total is equal one that is the uh, grand the grand total level okay is actually two not one <laughs> one is the subcategory so two let's move on that's our first variable next variable we want to have the subcategory category sum which is calculate the sales of is total and that is the subcategory level is the lowest level so is our is total equal zero next one var we want to know when a subcategory has been selected so sub category selected and then we use the is in scope and for the is in scope we have to use subcategory next variable we have to do should we do the category yeah i think so yeah okay we do the category selected so this is a variable that will tell us if a category if we are in a category level is in scope category there we go now we're going to calculate the category sum which this is the way that you were doing it before you will go to calculate sales total shift enter you go to categories how i write is total is go to go faster is equal one and then all selected categories ah, category. there you go and then finally i've done something wrong what is it why are you complaining my friend um, are all selected I don't know what on earth it's complaining about calculate categories is total equal one I have no idea okay return um, now we're going to do the switch the same like we did before so switch true if you don't know how that works again check my dax for this video 
And then now we're going to put things in order. We're going to actually go through all the stuff that we wrote and just laid it out. So this is going to do, if subcategory is selected, grab the subcategory sum. Is category selected? Grab the category sum. Is it grand total? Grab grand total. Okay, let's do it. Subcategory, so if it's subcategory selected, if it is selected, sorry about this, then subcategory sum. Next one, if category selected, grab category sum, right? Category sum. There you have it. Otherwise, you grab obviously the grand total. Too many arguments were passed to the all selected. Oh, no. Sorry about that. All except, oh, I, I blame it on my gold. And now we have everything correctly written at least. And uh, this is how a formula looks like. So again, this calculates the grand totals. So if grand total, if you're on the total line on the last one, like here, if you are another, then give the sum. If you are on a subcategory level, like here, sum for the subcategory. If you are in a category level, sum for the category level. Okay, let's put this into action and see if it works. If we go to category, subcategory, we do a matrix and we bring those little arrows up. And now we put our hierarchy sales. Oh, ouch. This should go in there. And uh, as you can see, I don't know if you see because it's so awfully small. But how about we do it a little bit bigger? Values, boom, boom, boom. And then we go row headers like that. And then we make this, doesn't matter if we make it bigger. So if we go back to our Excel sheet, and we look, let's put that there, put that there, let's put this one out in here. So we see bikes, 28,318, which is correct. You see it here. We see accessories, 78 million. There you have it. And then when you have the grand total, 28 million, which is correct. And everything looks like it should. Ouch, where, where are you going? So everything looks like it should. In instead of having this mess, you are actually having a hierarchy that works. Again, I don't know why you wouldn't calculate these, remove the grand totals and do it manually on DAX. Let me know in the comment box. So hopefully this explains how Inscope works. Sorry, it's a long video, but something's required a little bit more time to explain. With that said, November, Power Week is not over yet. There will be a video tomorrow, on Sunday, and on Monday. So get ready for that. Have a fantastic weekend. I hope I get better very soon. And I'll see you again tomorrow, actually. So, bye.